Ali 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 apa ya 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 ya. Marcus Conti reporting. The Mueller report is now 24 hours old. 24 hours old, and the spin machines are spinning wildly on mainstream media, trying to prove the other party wrong and that they were right all along. And on and on and on. So uh, I want to try to be the adult in the room today. I put on my jacket. <clears throat> put on my jacket to try to be the adult in the room. Try to put some. Try to inject some sanity into what's going on here, into all this political wickedness, because that's really what the Mueller report covers up. It covers. It covers. You know, <clears throat> devastating corruption. Devastating um, discourse to the point of people seeing, uh, viewing an object and seeing two totally different. Uh, things in front of them. Right? So, so let's talk about um, you know. There's collusion, obstruction, the underlying truth, right? So for me, again, Mueller report. I know everybody has a different opinion of it, right? So you're going to see the people that wanted to prove obstruction that Trump obstructed justice to withhold the information from from Congress and the public and all this stuff about what happened in the 2016 election. They're saying he obstructed a Russian investiga- uh, investigation into Ru- Russian meddling. And then we find out that there was no, that he had no involvement whatsoever. So there is no, there is no obstruction. How can you obstruct something that, that didn't happen? Right? And, uh, and, and again, you know, Trump is the, Trump is the, Trump is the, is the angry dog. You know, he's the dog in the room. And if you corner him, he's going to bite you, right? So he did. He, he bit them, right? And, uh, you know, so did he collude with, with the Russian government to hack the election? No. <laughs> now, the big part is the real, the real elephant in the room is that there was no hack. Notice mainstream media doesn't talk about that. Uh, you know, maybe, I mean, Tucker Carlson touches on it here and there, but they've pretty much left it uh, behind, but... The real issue is the hack, that the ha- there was no hack, that it was an inside dump from the DNC, and the whole Russia scam ripoff, you know, story evolves out of the Hillary Clinton campaign, Robbie Mook, John Podesta, you know, Donna Brazil, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, that crowd created this, this illusion that Russia swooped into the DNC and and, and rigged all the computers and, and fished out their information and all this bullshit, right? And the Russian, Russian military operatives swooped in. There's no evidence of any of it. There is a lot of evidence that the DNC cheated, uh, cheated wildly. So, so that's, I mean, we'll, we'll keep going into the, the Mueller investigation. And uh, we cross our fingers and, 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 and know the real hero in the in the episode is Julian Assange without Assange publishing the WikiLeaks you know the DNC leaks without him doing that there would be no reason for a Russian uh, narrative that Russia did it right because there you know because there would be nothing to cover right the the Russia story covers the WikiLeaks leaks the truth about the DNC and quite possibly the truth about who actually leaked it, which was, which the publisher uh, uh, alludes to the fact that it was a, a gentleman named Seth Rich in Washington, D.C. Right? So we can argue all that and we'll continue to, we'll continue to look at it. But let's look at the world events right now. So, so again, we'll look at uh, Trump vetoes Yemen um, the, to end the Yemen war. And uh, what's going on in South America, Pompeo. Uh, and I'll end it on a, with a little hope. I'm going to give you guys a little hope. I'll give you a little hope for the future uh, in the end. So uh, let's look first at uh, what Tulsi Gabbard has if to Donald say. Donald Trump, I will not turn our great country into the prostitute of Saudi Arabia. By vetoing the war powers resolution, Trump has again proven that he is the servant of Saudi Arabia, the theocratic dictatorship that spends billions of dollars every single year spreading the most extreme and intolerant form of Islam around the world. 
the very same ideology that motivates Al-Qaeda and other jihadists. Saudi Arabia also supports terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS in a number of other ways, and they're waging a genocidal war in Yemen with U.S. support. We are complicit in this genocide that's causing millions of people to starve and suffer. What to speak of the tens of thousands of innocent children and civilians who have been killed. We must do the right thing and stop assisting Saudi Arabia as they carry out this genocide. But unfortunately, Trump is more interested in pleasing the Saudis than doing what's right. I guarantee you that as president, I will actually put the interests and the values of the American people first, not the interests of the theocratic dictatorship of Saudi Arabia. A leader is rising up. A leader, Tulsi Gabbard, leading on, on Saudi Arabia. So she paints a bleak picture of Donald Trump siding with the Saudis and continuing a war in Yemen. Uh, why, do, why are we having a war in Yemen? Where the fuck is Yemen anyway? Let's take a look. Uh, let's go to Yemen. Yemen. Let's go to Yemen. Where's Yemen? So look at where Yemen is. See Yemen on the map? Right. So here's Saudi Arabia. Here's where all the money is. Here's the horn of uh, horn of Africa. Ah, uh, Oman. Uh, so Saudi Arabia, here's where the money is. And the Persian Gulf, you see this little town right here. This is Kuwait. This is what the war was all over about the oil with Iraq taking back Kuwait. And Saudi Arabia controls Kuwait and Bahrain and Qatar and the United Emirates, right? But really, here Yemen is the is the whipping boy, is the is the uh, slave, the slave of the area. It's uh, war torn. It's kind of like a training ground for Al Qaeda and uh, and um, ISIS. Right? It's a it's a breeding ground, right? It's like this is where you get the poor people, the religious freaks, to convince that are convinced that that uh, all these people up here and all these people in Europe, these are the bad people. These United States are the devils, right? And they, they pitch that stuff, right? Saudi Arabia pitches that idea to the ignorant masses in Yemen and then causes, you know, kind of a, 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 a place where you could, you know, draft. How do you get people to fly planes into a building? Or how do you get people to... to strap explosives onto them onto their body and blow themselves up in the middle of a a, a town or something uh, religious fear, fervor right you don't see the king of saudi arabia doing something like that so uh, lucky lucky hi uh, what do we got here man what's <laughs> Google it won't let you it won't let you go down to street level. I guess Google has never never made its way through. But uh, it's mostly desert, man. It's a desert town. And uh so what so why is it why is it important? Why is this important? Because uh because Trump has, um, we're, we're at war there. We're, we're supporting Saudi Arabia to the tune of $100 billion in arms sales a year, giving them, selling them the weapons. We're not supporting them. We're just selling the weapons to Saudi Arabia, the whore. Uh, and we're whoring ourselves out to Saudi Arabia, and they sell the weapons here. All right? And um, so what is Trump, what's Trump's position? Uh, Trump issues his second veto, blocking congressional resolu resolu resolution resolution to end U.S. support for Saudi-led war in Yemen. Now, why is he doing that? Why would he? Why would? Why would all of all of the House and all of the Senate approve a bill to stop the war in Yemen? I thought Trump was about counterinsurgency wars, ending them. No, he's not. He's he's about kissing Saudi Arabia's ass and doing a curtsy in 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 Saudi Arabia and uh, selling them bombs and and keeping keeping that OPEC shit in place. And then, you know, also heading towards, uh, he wants, Saudi Arabia is all about trying to store, start a war 
with Iran. Right? It, it's about control of the peninsula, right? See, they already control the Red Sea. Now if they control the Persian Gulf, if they knock off Iran, Saudi Arabia will expand into this area. Uh, that's all it really is. It's it's all it's all power struggle, right? So Trump Trump loses points there. See, this is what the Mueller report covers, right? While people are arguing back and forth about collusion and obstruction and and who hacked who, right? Who cheated what? Whose election? All of this rages on as if uh, without any interruption whatsoever, right? This is the biggest. This this should be the biggest story in the world, right? In in, in news right now. That Trump pulls back on on the Yemen war, but because all the politicians are corrupt, because they all take the money, they don't they don't care. Saudi Arabia dumps millions and millions and millions of dollars into uh, U.S. elections and and you know so it's it's all about the money. Right? Here's Trump again. Trump vetoes Trump's veto of Yemen war resolution is a shocking rebuck to Congress. Well, Congress. Congress didn't push back, did they, really, you know? So Congress is rolling over. It is, uh, you know, Trump Trump vetoes measure to end U.S. involvement in Yemen, blah, 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 blah. So we know what's going on there, right? So so that's so that's the Yemen, right? And what about Venezuela? And, and, and now, now you've got even worse, right? So Trump cracks down on Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. All along, right? Right now, media, mainstream media is all about Mueller. Mueller? No, no. Look, this guy got to look at Mueller. And uh, so they're cracking down on on these guys. So this is Cuba's leader. This is uh, Nicaragua's leader. And that's uh, Maduro from Venezuela, right? So, oh, let's go to Venezuela. Venezuela. Everybody, Matilda. Matilda, gonna take my money and run Venezuela. So... So Trump is calling these guys, this is, this is John Bolton, this is American politics at its finest, right? So the Trump administration on Wednesday intensified its crackdown on Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, rolling back Obama uh, administration policy, announcing new restrictions and sanctions against the three countries whose leaders, National Security Advisor John Bolton dubbed, quote, the three stooges of socialism. I mean, it's just, they, they're just, the, the U.S., he does, this guy doesn't know how to shut his mouth. Between Bolton and Mike Pompeo and Trump leading it, it's just, it's just a disaster, really. The Troikia of Tyranny. First, it was the Troikia three of Tyranny, right? Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua. Now they're the three stooges of socialism, right? And this all goes on in our name, right? All goes on in our name. These guys are trying to fend off imperialism in South America. Uh, let's look at the. Let's have a look. Everybody, Matilda, going to take my money and run Venezuela. Uh, so here we are. Uh, so here's the trickier, the trickier of tyranny. So here's Nicaragua, Cuba. See that? Nicaragua, Cuba, and Venezuela is over here. Right? So it's like. Look at the chunk of property Venezuela has. Huge piece of property that the United States would like to get in there. They control all this oil and, and, and resources. The United States would love to knock them off, right? So is there any truth to the story? Is, is Venezuela a, a, a tyrannic, tyrannic, you know, place? No, of course not. Huh? So let's listen to Pompeo's definition of what's going on. He's a fucking liar. Cuba's behavior in the Western Hemisphere undermines the security and stability of countries throughout the region, which directly threatens United States national security interests. Cuba's, Cuba's behavior threatens the United States. That's what he just said. How does Cuba, a little, little nation with no bombs and no guns and no planes, sanctions out, out their ass, travel bans, I live in, you know, you're driving around cars from the 1940s, 1970s, how are they a threat to the United States? Listen, listen to that again. Cuba. Behavior in the Western Hemisphere undermines Cuba's behavior in the Western Hemisphere. Cuba's behavior. And what is that behavior? That they're, they're willing to trade with people like China and Russia who have a lot of money and can actually help them out of poverty? That's the behavior you're talking about, Mike Pompeo? Undermines the security and stability of countries throughout the region, which no, directly doesn't. threatens United States national security and 
actress. They always they, he always hedges his bets. Not n- national security, not national security, national security interests. It, it just it's jargon. The Cuban regime has for years exported its tactics of intimidation, repression, and violence. Sadly, it has where where has it where has it imported it, any of that stuff? It's just a lie. Cuba's most prominent export these days is not cigars or rum. It's oppression. Detente with the regime has failed. The regime continues to deprive its own people of the fundamental freedoms of speech, press, assembly, and association. For these reasons, I'm announcing that the Trump administration will no longer suspend Title III, effective May 2nd, the right thing to bring the right to bring an action under Title III of the Libertad Act will be implemented in full. I have already informed Congress of my decision. More sanctions. Implementing my Title III in full means a chance at justice for Cuban Americans who have long sought relief for Fidel Castro and his lackeys seizing property without compensation. What they're trying to do is they're trying. He's trying to install a reparation. Remember, in the 40s and the 50s, like even the the mafia had casinos in Havana. You remember I Love Lucy where Ricky Ricardo, he was from Cuba, remember? And it, Cuba was, was very affluent at the time. And then Castro, you know, times changed or whatever happened, right? And then, so, so uh, Cuba, so then Cuba was on the shit list and Castro rose to power, right? So, but Cuba, so what the point is that Pompeo and someone like Donald Trump, a casino guy, they say, yeah, yeah, go back to the, you know, go back to the fifties, right? We'll just go back there. We'll flatten them. We'll make, we'll make shit happen over there, and we'll take back Cuba. We'll take Nicaragua. We'll take Venezuela and get all that oil because there's plenty of oil over there. We'll make it. How come Saudi Arabia is living large and has the, you know, all this money and all this power, and and Venezuela can't get their shit together? We'll we'll go over there and we'll help them get their shit together, and in the process, we'll take their shit. So, so that's that's what's going on in 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 Venezuela. They're still trying to trying to say that Cuba and especially Venezuela are you know usurping their the the real power, especially in, in Venezuela. So it's a big sham. Right? What else? So here's his Pompeo again sticking his foot in his mouth. Right, Pompeo has lost his mind. This is our, in our name. This is Trump's swamp. Working politics uh, abroad. China hits back at Latin American remarks. So Pompeo goes over there. They right. He's had to have a sit down with with uh, Chinese leaders, right? And um, uh, and he says that he's saying that the Chinese are quote spreading disorder in Latin America alongside Russia. Uh, Pompeo intensified the two the two t- countries both of which have, over the past two months, condemned U.S. efforts towards regime change in Venezuela, of, of backing failing investment projects that only fuel corruption and undermine democracy, especially in Venezuela. So that's the Chinese talking sense into Pompeo and the Americans, right? Because there is no sense in what they're doing. They're, they're not about, the United States is all the things that Pompeo just accused Cuba of being is exactly what the United States in it, it, United States is. It's a hostile, you know, a hostile uh, uh, empire. Right? So, so the the Chinese guy right here he says Pompeo has lost his mind. <laughs> right? He's trying. To, Pompeo is trying to say that uh, China helped destroy the country and said Latin American leaders must therefore see who their true friend is. Right? So Pompeo is trying to vilify Russia and China right, in the Venezuelan uh, scenario because Russia and China are negotiable and negotiating with Venezuela, trying to lift it out of its problems, buy its oil, allow investments into the country. And the United States just is not going to have it because they're greedy fucks and there's you know, the, the Monroe Doctrine, meaning that everything in the... Everything in this whole part of the world is ours. What are you talking about? This is all ours, right? No, this is North America. This is the Americas, right? It's all ours, right? You can have this shit over here. That's yours. Take over these countries. Nobody cares. But this is all ours. Stay out of our neighborhood, right? That's what he's saying. Right? 
Uh, so I think there's a lesson to be learned from all this. China and others are being hypocritical, calling for non-intervention in Venezuela's affairs. Their own financial interventions have helped destroy that country, Pompeo said. Right? So, so Pompeo is trying to get Maduro out of power in Venezuela and install a CIA plant um, What's his name? Fucking Guardo. Juan Guardo. Juan Guardo. I almost forgot his name. Juan Guardo. Juan Guardo. We love you. He's trying to, Pompeo's trying to install Juan Guardo to do the dirty work of the United States. Right? So China has $62 billion in loans uh, in, in Venezuela. Heavy, heavy, heavy uh, investment there. So here's the Chinese spokes guy. Right? Last word. The words and deeds are despicable. But lies are lies. Even if you say it a thousand times, they are still lies. Mike Pompeo, you can stop," said the Chinese. Um, so, so we're, we're basically we're basically being made a mockery of, right, across the globe with this kind of with this kind of uh, irrational, confusing, stupid behavior abroad. All why because it. You know, underlying. Look at the Mueller investigation. Look at how Republicans. Oh, let's let's talk about that too. I don't even think I talked about that. So, so here's the here's the Mueller here's the Mueller report. Right? This is what this is what Democrats and Republicans are saying so far. Uh, quote: You could you could tell who who said what. I'll you I'll read it, and then you try to guess if it's an R or a D. Right? Nothing we saw today changes the underlying result of the 22-month Mueller investigation that ultimately found no collusion. Right? That's an R, of course. Right? Democrats want to keep searching for imaginary evidence that's, that supports their claims, but it is simply not there. It is, it is time to move on. Right? That's, that's another R. Uh, even, it, even in its redacted form, Quote, even in its redacted form, the Mueller report outlines disturbing evidence of President Trump engaged in obstruction of justice and misconduct. Uh, it's a D, right? You got to give that to the Ds, right? Here's another one. No cover up, no cover up when there's nothing to cover up. That's an R. It's so predictable, right? In a press uh, brief shortly before the report was released, uh, let's see what's another one here. The special counsel's finding findings paint a very different picture than what the president and his attorney his attorney general would have the american people believe uh, that's a d right of course special counsel mueller has provided a detailed and sobering report about the troubling contacts between trump campaign and the russians and about the president's efforts to impede the uh, and end the special counsel's investigation that's a d you see how predictable it is? Special Counsel Mueller's report paints a disturbing picture of a president who has been weaving a web of deceit, lies, and improper behavior and acting as if the, the law doesn't apply to him. <laughs> D. That's the two big Ds. Uh, that's Schumer and Pelosi. It's, I mean, it's all so predictable. Democrats owe American people an apology. <clears throat> R. Right? <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, uh, here's a good one. While Washington Democrats hoped for the special counsel to deliver a collusion co conclusion, collusion conclusion, this report instead delivered a death blow to the baseless conspiracy theories. Scalisi R. Uh, this sad chapter of American history is behind us. It would be a shame for an onslaught of misguided, publicized investigations to continue. <sighs> there's no, there's no end to it. Right? There's no real re resolution, and none of the R's or the D's have talked about the real cause, the root cause, <clears throat> the real issue of that the Democratic, you know, that the election machines are rigged, and that there was no Russian swooping in doing shit. None of them want to talk about that because then it, the Democrats would open up the 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 possibility of again Seth Rich. And the what actually happened in D.C. and uh, and all that. So what what is the hope? I, I promised you hope in the beginning. So let's talk about hope. Ah, uh, what is this? Emerson poll. 
the Emerson, Emerson Lake, not Emerson Lake and Palmer, Paul. Remember Emerson Lake and Palmer? Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. Remember that? You probably don't remember that shit. But anyway, here's, here's, uh, here's the Emerson poll in the election. Now, I know everybody says, oh, elections, little Conti, the, the, the politicians, they're all so corrupt. Nobody's trustworthy. You can't trust any of them. Ah, fucking trust Q. Q tells you, tells those are the answers. I know, I know, I know. But listen to me, listen to me. Listen to me. I know there's policy in this country that can help, right? That helps you. Universal single-payer health care. There's only one politician in the country right now that's talking about it. There's only one driving force between getting money out of politics. Just talking about it. Right? You're not going to get... You can't, it's not, a, it's not one person. One president can't overturn the power of a corrupt Congress, 535 strong. Right? It's just the president versus 535, it doesn't work. Now, Trump is, is you know, is, is bobbing and weaving, but he got none of his, none of the things that he ever wanted to get done, got done because he convinced the people that I got it, I got this one. Oh, you want uh, you want a wall? Yeah, hold my beer. I'll get you a wall. Oh, you want uh, you want uh, you know uh, jobs to stay in America? Okay, uh, stand by. I got that covered. Right? And he's fooled. He fooled himself, and he fooled everybody else. So, step aside and let's let the policies of getting money out of politics lead. Right? Term limits, possibly. Right? All the things that Bernie Sanders stands for. So here is the. Here is the uh, rally. Don't you don't have to rally behind the person. Rally behind the idea. But right now the person is leading, and here's here he is. Here's the latest Emerson poll, April 11 to 14. Uh, Twenty. He's leading 29 percent in the polls, right? 29 percent over Joe Biden, who's not even in the race. So this is a fake number. This is this is the this is the dead horse that the Democrats are going to support. They're going to put all their power behind. Joe Biden, and they're going to have all these dead horses run in the primary, right? You got, you got 20, I don't know how many names, right? All of these shit sandwiches, right, are then, with the exception of Tulsi Gabbard, are going to rally behind Joe Biden or give their silent support to Joe Biden, right, in the, in the primary, right? And then dif- diffuse the amount of votes that the the percentage of the vote that Bernie Sanders can get right see 20 he needs 50 percent right he needs 50 percent of the pledge delegates going into the convention right it's a very corrupt system right it's not one person one vote with the Democrats so the object is to is to support these are the these are the, the he's the front runner Bernie Sanders right even even Emerson reveals it 29 percent and shit sandwich Joe Biden, the fake fake populist, twenty four percent who we don't even know. Joe Joe Biden, you know, child child grabber and tit grabber and fucking come here, I'm gonna hold your fucking head. Fucking creepy Joe Biden, man. He's the he's the favorite. That's ridiculous. Right, well, he's he's the favorite among shit sandwiches. So when all the shit sandwiches fold, they they theoretically support Biden to stop. Sanders. That's that's the strategy, right? But there is hope, you know. So if if we can convince these shit sandwiches to support, see the, the Democrats don't even make sense, right? You saw that that article yesterday with the New York Times. It said that um, the Democrats are planning a stop Sanders campaign through through uh, correct the record and uh, David Brock. Right? They want to stop Bernie Sanders, but Bernie Sanders. In, in, in the real world, Bernie Sanders, you would look at this and say, oh, shit, Bernie Sanders is the leader, and you would get behind the leader. But because Bernie Sanders represents a real change, universal single-payer health care, de- de-escalating the, the counterinsurgency wars abroad, for the mil- taking down the military-industrial complex, eliminating, eliminating the, uh, the insurance companies and bringing affordable health care to all in America – Making college tuition free at city and state universities, and, and right, and on and on and on, doing all this good for the people, he could never be their pick. The corporate Democrats cannot support Sanders 
because of what he represents to their bottom dollar, to their bottom line, to their donors. They don't want Sanders. So they support Biden and they use Biden to hold back Sanders. And then they have a contested convention where the superdelegates, they'll try and try. They're going to try to get all the Bernie Sanders people to flip again to support Biden. And if Biden goes into the uh, general election against Trump, you get four more years of it. So nothing changes. Absolutely nothing changes. What I'm trying to say is, if you want hope, right? ah, if you want hope, 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 not even, not even the, the Obama hope. I'll take that back. It's not Obama hope. It's, it's real change in America. It's real grassroots change. Millions of people rising up, kind of like what, what the French are doing with Yellow Vest. Think of Sanders' movement, not Sanders the man, as a, a Yellow Vest movement that, that, that really, really, really faces off against the oligarchy, which is the major banks, which is the military-industrial complex, which is the pharmaceutical lobby that wants to keep people sick and, and, and drain their resources through insurance, insurance money. Right? If you really want to back the right you know, the right ideas, then there, there's where your, your hope lies. And it doesn't take much. It just takes, start, you know, we could all just, you know, run around and, 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 and Mueller report and, and uh, Trump's going to lock everybody up. And, and the reality is none of, none of that's, none of that's going to happen, right? Nothing has changed in two years. Understand that with the Trump people. Nothing has really changed. I know what you, you think it does, and you're calling out the dirty Democrats, but not a single one of them has ever been tried for any crime. There's no, there's no consequence to any of their actions thus far. Uh, so it's, it's an impotent try. But if you get millions of people together and Sanders rises up and those people stay active, which they do show signs of staying active, although when Sanders lost, they all put their head in the sand alongside of you know, the, the Democrats and the Hillary's, I said, oh, no, no, look, he's corrupt. He quit. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't buy the fact that Sanders quit because he's still running and you're still crying. Uh, uh, while you're here, kindly, um, if you like this kind of reporting and you're fed up with mainstream media, kindly become a Patreon of this channel. If you'd like to make a one-time contribution, uh, hit the PayPal link. You could also go on eBay and you can buy stickers. That's the old one. And uh, this is the new one. I hung mine on a on a, on a chain. And I, I wear this when I go out into the uh, when I go out on the street reporting at uh, Marcus Conti reporting. So uh, thank you very much, Marcus Conti reporting.